Hey guys, this is Cyphus from Defense of the Patients. I just want to say thanks for listening and telling your friends. You guys are the best advertising that we could ask for as a show. If you'd like to continue to support .p, consider the .p Patreon. The Patreon's been completely revamped and we've added new prizes and new milestone goals. Prizes include immortalization on the .p website, a chance to 1v1 mid Roland and prove you can take him on, and even a chance to be a .p show host for an episode doing and talking about whatever you'd like. You can even change up the co-hosts. Our first milestone goal is 500 bucks a month. When we hit it, Roland, Wazoo, and I will do a 12-hour long live-streamed episode with amazing giveaways and fan phone calls all day long on the .p hotline. You'll be talking right alongside with us on the show. Show your support at patreon.com forward slash defense of the patients. Thanks for listening. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Theory Crafting Thursday. I, of course, am Rosinity. I'm back. Um, Y'all are in my loving embrace. Well, the embrace of my voice, I suppose. And, uh, boy, I have internet again, so that's nice. I, uh... <laughs> well, yes. We have to listen to your shit again. It's nice, depending on if you're, like, I don't know. I suppose if you're losing games to me, it's not nice. I suppose if you're me, it's nice. And that's, that's really all I care about, let's be honest. That makes sense. So, guys gotta have priorities. But, yeah, so I, I was painfully uh, unable to play games for, like, four days. But that's all solved. Our lord and saviors at the isp solve my problems and uh anyway i'm back and uh that that's that was the beginning of my week in dota i suppose was not being able to play but since then i've had a pretty good time playing dota aka playing oracle because that's really all i've been playing for like the last week yeah dota's dota's been a, a kind mistress lately yeah well you you uh you better take advantage of this one yeah yeah you are Oh my god, just... just... There's, no, there's no getting around it. Alright, I need to get out of this fucking practice Morphling game. Yeah, anyway. oh, spoilers, we are playing Morphling today. Uh, unlike, things we're doing. unlike last week, where you were like, yo, we're gonna play Morphling this whole time, and all you did was talk about no, Morphling. No, no, I said, I said we were gonna do Morphling or Luna. I briefly I <laughs> went, over, went, over, went over the theory behind, uh, behind Ag's Luna, and then it was beautiful, and I loved it, and I, I want to do that again always. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it was interesting, but you, like, the ratio of Luna talk to Morphling talk was probably, like, 80-20. Oh, no, no no debates there. I just, yeah. uh, I saw that game, and I was like, you know what? No one's gonna want to fucking have a Morphling. He hasn't won a tournament yet. And then he did, and now people want a Morphling. Yeah, I was gonna say, I've been seeing a lot of this hero, which I'm happy about, because I love Morphling. Um, unless I'm playing against him, because, boy, is that, like, the most aggravating thing in the world. Um, yeah, Mor- Against Morphling without silence. Like, you feel like you're killing him, and then you're just like, wait, is that a faint orange tinge? And then you realize you're not killing him at all, because he's fucking huge. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's a sad day when it's like, oh, right, Morphling's down to, like, 5% health, and then it's like, oh, nope, he strength switched, and now he has, like, yeah. eight times that. Anyway, he's before good, we get on with, that. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll get into that I was gonna at some say. point. Yeah, I mean, you you have benefited from this patch a lot. Your lone druid, just looking at your match history, is kind of gross. Um, yeah, it's a it's a fun time. Yeah, it's just like there's like what three lone druid losses on the entire, or four lone druid losses on the entire page, and then many, many, many wins. Uh, I only count three on my page. Maybe if you look at Dota buff, it's different. But yeah. Um, um, yeah, I mean, I'm on your profile anyway. Okay. Good hero. Good hero. Um, luckily, a lot of those were with me on our team practice. So, That's true. Uh, few, few of them were. Few of them were. The rest were getting me up to forty eight hundred, which I'm uh, pretty happy about. New, new personal yeah, well, high. I was gonna say you got to hit five k in this patch and then not. Touch yeah. It. But uh, yeah. I'm gonna, gonna get five k here. But you don't play unranked, so that's gonna be hard. I'll just to make keep. another account. That's just that's <laughs> what we got to do. Yeah, that sounds. Uh, that sounds like the most NA Dota thing I can imagine. It's like, yeah, no, hit, hit a number and then be like, "Oh, I have authority now as a as a XK player." But or like, just like take a screenshot of it once I get it and then never show it on my profile again if I go down. <laughs> yeah, boy, I feel so bad for Korean barbecue. I don't know if I mentioned this on the show, but he's he uh, has been like hovering plus or minus like fifty points from five K, like ever since I've known him. Um, 
and uh, that that's like the most miserable time to play on, on solo or was it that party uh, on both actually oh wow okay <laughs> yeah well, it's unlike. like yeah it's one of those things where kind of like Roland where it's like pretty like relatively perfectly calibrated where it's like they fluctuate by like you know whatever it is like 150 points yeah. but at the end of the day like they always kind of come back to that central um, yeah I'm glad I don't have to worry about that being that I'm like right in the mid 4k so I don't have to worry about like that huge fucking yeah. anxiety plateau you're like she gotta get it I just gotta get 5k then people will fucking respect me yeah no nobody's nobody's gonna respect me anyway so it's like well why bother yeah, that's um, fair but yeah I mean if I was to go on a road to 5k I'd probably just play Oracle the whole time because boy that hero is really good and um that's yeah. that's I feel like that's all I need to say. If you if you know how to play Oracle, I feel like you should be playing him because he is an easy way to win games. Or I shouldn't say easy, but like he definitely helps your chances. And yeah. people always complain that like support isn't as gratifying, but like if you're playing Oracle, it's super gratifying because you can just steal kills constantly. And yeah, it's like Visage in that regard. You just fucking. Yeah. I mean, your your skill is just made to kill steal. It's, it's yeah. great. And then it's all like your visit, skills are like except yeah. without travel time or an animation. It's just like <laughs> right. instant 360 damage or like 300 cuz and all your skills have like sick interactions and shit and they're all synergistic and things so you feel like you're actually playing like a fairly complicated hero and not just like all right hex him stun him finger of yeah. death we did it. Yeah, I feel like um I feel like Zach Galifianakis in The Hangover when they go uh, to uh go to Vegas and he's like counting cards and all like the random numbers are pocket popping up behind him. Yeah. That's like, that's like what I feel like when I play Oracle and I make like a really sick play, I'm like, all right, cool. I'm, I'm a God, which yeah, interaction like, audio, like hero. it's really not that complicated, but it feels a little, like it, it, it feels a lot harder than it is. And, yeah. uh, definitely when you make the wrong move, it is, uh, it painfully is evident. Yeah. When it's like your carry is trying to kill somebody, but you've disarmed them, and it's like, whoops, sorry, bud. <laughs> I I love shit like that though, because it's like, I mean, mis- mistakes are really easy to make in Dota, but some are just like way easier to notice. Like uh, we had Flub on, like whenever his Earth Spirit doesn't hit a fucking roll, I'm just like, you, you just see this fucking idiot just fly across the screen. You're like, well, he looks yep. like he's fucking stupid as shit. Yeah, or like or you know, same thing. exactly. Yeah, or like you know, there heroes like if you're playing Invoker, and it's like, all right. If you messed up, like you just keep your spell, and you're like, "Oh, it's fine. I just coincidentally didn't need to have ice yeah. wall at whatever." Um, whereas, you know, perfect examples like you know, if your faceless void and you mess up a chrono, it's like, "All right, yeah. we, we're going to flame this guy for the next thirty minutes." So that's 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 that. So that that's been my week in Dota. It's been winning as Oracle, losing as Oracle, and um, you know, just generally having some fun. Not yeah. not not super weighted either way. Now that I look at it, I'm like pretty even fifty fifty. Um, I had a big winning streak actually right when I came back, but that that is long gone. Um, yeah, and uh, in addition to my to my lone druid, the hero that I've been mixing in with like the most success lately has been like the occasional phantom assassin game, and like yeah. that's a hero that's like fallen out pretty hard. And then Envy had his whole. Uh, do Phantom Assassin nonstop and watch him lose like a thousand MMR, and then yeah. it was just like, yo, this hero is just garbage. Um, but I'm 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 coming around to this hero pretty huge, and then like Slasher's video that came out about it, I feel mm-hmm. like I'm just like slowly shifting a lot of my ideas about like how any hero can be built, and kind of the conventions of like kind of shitting on like low tier pub play builds versus like you know a deeply respected high level like no you don't go Battle Fury because it's it's not good and it's this greedy stupid pub thing and no one goes Battle Fury, but then like. I don't know, you watch Eternal Envy, or you watch, uh, like, Arteezy when uh, when Phantom Assassin was, like, relatively meta. He went Battle Fury most games, like, on yeah. mid, mid-PA mid with Battle Fury. Like, it's, there's, there's just, like, a lot of, there's, there's so much shit going on. Like, uh, fucking, I, I was just thinking about it, like, P- PA wants Desol, or wants damage a lot, and, like, Basher got, like, Basher was where she got her damage from before. And plus yep. damage is way more important than, like, the proc damage from physical stuff, because she has her crit that, that, like, modifies. I think it's, like, overall, like, a 42.5% damage change on her. So, like, plus damage versus, like, being averaged out into a proc is, like, you know, almost pretty pretty near 50% better. So, like, that was a huge nerf for her, for her, like, main plus damage source. So, like, if, you're, if you are going to go the, like, either Mask of Madness or Helm of the Dominator, like treads s and y like you're gonna be stuck at 150 damage until you get an abyssal which is like super shit 
Yeah. But if you go Battle Fury, like, that's the only plus damage item left in the game besides Deso that isn't, like, a fucking Rapier or Daedalus. It's like, Battle Fury gives 50 damage, and Deso gives 50 damage. Like, what else gives relatively near that level of damage? Nothing. Butterfly. Yeah. <laughs> just go that first item, Butterfly. <laughs> yeah, plus dude. Damage. No, just I... get the casual Demon Edge. Um, that's true. That's like them Dota 1 builds. We were just talking about that before the thing, but like in Dota 1, it'd be like, back when you couldn't combine items, there were no recipes, and it was just like, yeah. I need damage, I'm gonna have boots and five demon edges. Or there you go. For a while, there wasn't a secret trap, so it'd be five mithril hammers. Yeah. Um, but plus yeah. Plus damage that, is just, it's just the best stat. It's just it's fucking, it's amazing. Plus damage, like, there's a reason that, you know, plus damage items are, like, way more expensive. That, like, a hyperstone is 55 attack speed for... 2,000 gold, and a Demon Edge is 40 damage for 2,400 gold. And, like, there's very real reasons behind that. Like, damage is just so fucking good. Yes, definitely. I agree. I, I mean, I'm a big PA fan myself. I liked mid-PA for a while, but I, I honestly can't... I don't think I've done it in, like, forever. And yeah. I don't see myself doing it, because it's just, like, he... I feel like he would lose, or she would lose every single matchup. Kind of like a lot of the mids right now, or just, like... Yeah. If you're like a melee mid, you're just not viable unless you're like Dragon Knight. But I do like PA a lot. Even then, I don't really think Dragon Knight's as viable as he was hyped to be at the start. I uh, yeah, I mean, I kind of think that hero sucks, but that that's a whole nother conversation. Yeah. Then again, I also think a lot of heroes that are actually pretty good suck. So who am I to say anything? Um, but I, I maybe I'll have to dabble around with PA. I feel like every game I see PA, they either like completely dominate the game and do really well, or they just feed out of their mind and yeah. are like the worst hero I've ever seen. Like, I I had a PA earlier, when it was like, we literally won his lane for him, we got him three kills by, like, six minutes, and all he did was farm, and then he still, like, was completely ineffective, because, like, the hero, even though people, like, I feel like PA is a hero that looks more simple than she is, right? You see PA, yeah. and you're just like, oh boy, what an idiot, like, all he has to do is hit W, and then, like, pray to crit. But it's like, in actuality, like, if you're not blink striking the right people and you're not casting daggers the proper way and all that and positioning and like not getting kited like that, that there's a lot of things that PA has to do yeah to, there was like, a effective there was a PA game I was playing with um Skrunk and uh and Bafa who is our, our mid and our off laner for the, the team that we just made recently um and I was like 13 and 1 on PA like 760 GPM and I delayed my BKB until like 45 minutes in or something like that or more like 40 because the game ended at 45 but yeah i had like uh i had like treads sanjin yasha battle fury and abyssal before i went uh black king bar and that was in a game with a tiny a jakiro a legion with blade mail a crystal maiden and a timber saw so hmm. like the fact that you can pull shit off like that with pa just like by playing around at super well like i would only like engage real quick to get a kill and i would just get the fuck out of there um so yeah like I, after playing that game like i think that was a better pa game that i played most you know Pretty much all the time. I just, you know, was really in the zone or whatever. But mm -hmm. uh, that was kind of like that lone druid moment where I'm like, okay, like, there is so much, like, there is so much skill cap on this hero that you can survive against, like, you know, four four or five compulsory BKB heroes on a PA without a BKB and still beat the shit out of everyone. Yeah, I think, you like, you raised two points that I immediately, like, I could do a whole podcast just on these two points. But delaying your BKB is so, yes. like, game-winning sometimes. Even on, like heroes or in games where you think or you know and you're like this is a bkb game like i was just playing a lena game actually with flub the other well co he co-hosted last week and uh he's also on our team i like i was playing lena in the mid lane which i know is bizarre because i so rarely get to mid anymore but i like delayed my bkb until like what the game was 40 minutes long so i probably only got it at, like 35 yeah. and i didn't even use it but it was just like this game, there was a Quap, a Bounty Hunter, an OD, and a Zeus all against me. And it was like, I need a BKB. But if you just like skirt the edges of the fight and you kill the right people and you do, you know, the right things maneuvering wise, like you can really end yeah. up with a really effective late game BKB instead of like a moderately effective mid game BKB. Yeah. That, and that, that, that was what I was like saying through the game. Like, I was like, all right, I'm going to finish Abyssal next. Like, yo, you really, you really ought to get a BKB. And it's like, no, 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 it's cool. It's cool. And then like the, at 40 minutes, I had a 10-second BKB. And, like, a PA with fucking Abyssal, Battle Fury, Sanjin, yeah. Yasha, uh, fucking, I think I had, like, Treads and maybe either a TP or, like, an Aegis at that point or something, and a 10-second BKB, like, you're fucking dead. 
Like you don't <laughs> live through a ten a ten second BKB PA at forty fucking minutes. That's like that's not okay. Yeah, and like the other thing that you brought up, which has been occurring to me a lot with the new map specifically, um, has been like you, you can if you're playing a core and you're in the radiant the new radiant jungle. There are so many new juke spots that like you can actually kite somebody for like hours, right? And like you can be low HP and just kite somebody until you have your yeah. spells back and you can do all these like crazy like high skill plays um based on that's, the new That's so apparent on Spectre when you just like walk through trees and shit back and forth and mm, I yeah. love that shit. Anyway, go on. Yeah. It's uh I mean that that's the gist of it. I mean that that's just like it's really satisfying to juke people. Like, remember the other day we played against that guy, the art of juking, who apparently yeah. like is known, and when we beat him, which was nice. But um, you definitely like, I don't know. I feel like there was there's so much more potential for juking in the new radiant jungle compared to the old one. Um, even if like the new radiant jungle is actually a big disadvantage for radiant. Um, I don't know if you saw Gorgon's article, but it was like it really changed the way I thought about how the jungle is balanced. Uh, and the gist of it was, boy, I'm using gist like all the time now. Um, the basic idea is that when in the dire jungle, the dire team, like you have to fight uphill to have like, what's the better way to explain it? The dire team has uphill advantage in their jungle vision wise, yeah, yeah. whereas the yeah, radiant that, team, fine. radiant team has a a like disadvantage. They're downhill on all their paths into the jungle. They're downhill. So, like, the Dire team is advantaged in the Radiant Jungle and in the Dire Jungle. And that was something that, like, I didn't think of. I may have, like, noticed internally. But until it was, like, spelled out for me, I was like, boy, that's actually, like, crazy, crazy, like, I mean, some would say OP. But I feel like that's a pretty big Dire advantage. Yeah, I I can see that. I don't think it's quite as pronounced for, like, uh, the Dire having an advantage in the Radiant Jungle, but for the Dire Jungle, I can definitely see that, like, that uh, that place near the, uh, like, the, the, mid, the midway entry point into the, uh, into the Dire Jungle, right next to the, the, the pole camp, where you have to, like, mm-hmm. go in this, like, really shitty crevice, and then there's, like, two uphill paths that, like, if anyone sees you, they can come from two directions and just shit on yeah. you without you being able to do anything. Oh, my God. That's, that's like, the scariest place to walk up ever. Like, if you're ever ganking mid and you're walking up that way, just, like, hope a support is not there pulling the hard cam because they can just, like, stun you and walk away and your whole fucking, like, attempt is just gone. Yeah, it definitely is, like, there are times when I'm playing support or core and I'm walking into, like, the dire jungle or the radiant jungle being occupied by the dire, or I suppose the dire jungle being occupied by the radiant, and I'm just, like... You know, I may die here, but I'm just gonna t- I'm just gonna wing it. It's like you know the risks, and you know you should be terrified, and it's like walking alone in the dark. Um, but it's really like you just screwed sometimes. But yeah, we'll see. I don't on think the, they're uh, gonna make any map changes. On, next on the radiant, you still have like that that new path that they made between the rune like entrance and then the like tower side entrance. There's like that little path that they made there, and like that one is super radiant advantage. But uh, like the main rune, the main rune ramp on radiant, you know, if if Dyer yeah. has a rune ward in that spot, like you can see on the high ground of that. Whereas uh, the radiant, like you, you're pretty much never gonna get the Dyer high ground vision in their jungle unless like you know you come in and specifically ward like behind it. It's it's impossible to place like a safe ward that can see yeah. the entrance to the Dyer jungle. So that's that's definitely a big thing. Yeah, there's uh, the, yeah, I mean there's that like one really good ward spot that I love where it's uh, like right next to the two medium camps up like right on top of like the central stairs in the Dyer oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. jungle. That's like one of my favorite ward spots in the entire game. Yeah, new new ward um, spot. That's, that's so dangerous fucking, to go to. The best, the best new ward spot that I love to death is like uh, radiant jungle between the um, the hard the the camp that used to be the hard camp that is now a medium camp, yeah. and the new the new hard camp. Uh, like going straight between those and then seeing down for the for the rune. Like, oh my god, that spot's so fucking good. I love it. Try that one out. It's the oh, best. Oh, gotcha. Yes, I, I that, I'm like so not used to the new map still. Yeah. When like you try to visualize like this. It's basically oh, okay. like above the pole camp, above the radiant pole camp, and then you can either move yeah. it to the left or right depending on what lane, like what uh, what kind of path you want extra vision down. But yeah, that 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 root, or that ward has helped me so much. Like every time I drop it, I'm just like, mm, pure value. You see so much of people jungling and all their map movements and stuff. It's really good. Yeah, I'm I'm uh, like finding new ward spots is like one of the most satisfying things in Dota for oh, me. Oh yeah, dude, placing wards, man. Like if whenever I play support, that's like all I'm about. I'm like, man, what a what a great spread of vision we have. How fantastic I, am I? 
I still remember like the first time I found out that you can ward outside of the map to protect from like a tinker or like uh, somebody with a yeah. blink. And I was like, this is the most game changing thing. Um, but then they made it obvious, so now it's not even that satisfying. Yeah, it's, it's just like, like oh, fucking Ice either. Rock sponsored. And you're like, oh, okay, like, this isn't my indie ward spot anymore. Like exactly. this thing before it was fucking well, well it recognized. Used to be like, it used to be like one of these awkward ward spots where like, if you placed it like 50 yeah. units off, it'd be like, okay, you get literally nothing out of this. But if you place it like the, in the right spot, it's like cool. I have vision of the entire little yeah. side jungle. Anyway. Hopefully we'll, skill cap. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Now we will see um, if I can throw out some nice wards because we're going to be playing our game soon. Uh, our combo this week, we already talked about Morphling a little, but we are going to be playing Morphling, or rather, we are not collectively going to be playing Morphling. You are going to be playing Probably Morphling. Not. We're not going to like share a keyboard thought, like they did. I thought at, I would uh, do like the right-clicking and the Q, and you would just like control when we're morphing uh, Strength or Agi. This this is off topic, but did you watch the Mo- at the Mafia LAN um, during hot, the Hot Bid Challenge? They had games where they had teams of five, and uh, two people, one would have the oh, mouse, yeah. one would have the keyboard, yeah, and then both of them blind, would be blindfolded. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, then, no, I, I saw some of that. That was yeah. hilarious. Well, I feel like we would be terrible at that, but it would be fun. Um, yeah. Anyway, the um, the sport we're going to be pairing with Morphling is Vengeful Spirit, who is uh, very popular right now. I mean, kind of always popular, but more she, recently she she's goes. seen a seen a rise also like bat rider is being picked up now so she's yeah yeah if, if, if bat is ever like a remotely relevant pick and uh and there's no other like very clear strong best supports uh, aside from of course earth spirit who is gonna get banned so yeah. uh yeah if there's if there's ever not like a clear this is definitely the support you want um i feel like venge and dazzle will just make their way to the top but dazzle's been nerfed so hard in oracle so yeah, much better than say. him that uh i mean outside of doing shit like fucking uh like nature's prophet tree bombs with dazzle dual offlane that I've seen every so often, which is fucking brutal, and I love it to death. But uh, yeah, outside of that, um, I feel like Venge and Dazzle are two supports that just kind of naturally rise to the top when people have no idea what to pick. Same thing with Clockwork for offlane. Like if yeah. fucking whenever a new patch comes out, we don't know what the offlane is like mm, pick Clockwork second pick. You we can't go wrong. Yep, I uh, I agree completely. I like Venge a lot in that this is a hero that like honestly I don't play Venge that much because. Like, I always kind of leave her by the wayside because there's, like... Even though I know she's a good pick, there's just other picks that are more, like, fun to play or just, like, more, like, direct counter picks in supporting, you know, like, uh-huh. direct counter supports, whereas, like, Venge is just always good. And, yeah, she is, like, a counter pick for certain things, like, oh, they have Faceless Void or, oh, they have uh, Batrider, stuff like that. But... I feel like she's just consistent, and that's like a really nice th- thing in a current yeah. meta that's very like robust and has a lot of viable strats and viable drafts, etc. Plus, yeah, she offers she, your Roche potential. And, for sure, for sure. Yeah, she she can synergize with minus armor. She can provides you with a little bit of disable. It's like you know, you, it's just disjointable. Uh, but the damage is good. It's like actually, it's one of the few nukes that's above three hundred damage, or one of the few you know like standard nukes. Mm-hmm. Um, and whenever I see a nuke above 300 damage, I'm like, all right, that's a real fucking nuke. Like, this hero can do some damage. Um, yeah. So she's got that. Yeah, the Wave of Terror is great. You can, like, cancel salves and shit from afar and uh, gives you, like, really good vision for scouting and that sort of thing. And then Vengeance Aura, like, lets her scale into the late game. Like, she's, she's pretty solid. Yeah, she definitely scales well. And like you said, I think, I mean, everybody knows, like, Dota is a game of information. And the vision you get from the Scream is like it's really long it's like a power shot and it's yeah. you know there's some times where it's like oh we just scattered a roche it's like that's the most potentially game winning bit of information you yeah. can get and uh plus of course like minus armor is crazy good especially in the early game where it's like all right you know you're trying to fight a tiny and he has zero armor and it's like all right cool you have minus four or whatever at level yeah. three you're just gonna that's fucking uh die. That's that's definitely there. Basically, the, the crux of it is that there are a lot of reasons to pick Venge, and not very many to not pick Venge. Plus, I mean, what other hero is effective while dead? Right, that's like a weird strength in and of itself. Yeah, dude, I I did not respect that uh, that Ag Scepter a while ago, and it just like I let it live through a lot through like large portion of a fight, and it just like kind of killed me in the background. I was <laughs> like, oh, oh, I got magic missile twice by this hero that I have already killed. That is yeah. fucking awful. What happened? Uh, yeah, so uh, respect that thing. Don't don't let that thing just live for no reason. That that is a mistake. 
Yeah, I, I mean, that that's like a lot of supports, though. It's like, you know, you leave a Skywrath alone, it's like, oh, just a Skywrath, let's kill the cores. And then it's like, well, he just threw like 16 arcane bolts at you, and that, that yeah. stuff adds up. But Skywrath um, doesn't do that after you kill him. Like, I didn't ignore <laughs> them, true. I fucking killed her. And then I ignored <laughs> her ghost. Which I feel like, you know, like from real life, normally I ignore ghosts in, in my life. So I kind That's of fair. applied that to the game, and like they don't translate super well. It turns out you do have to pay attention to ghosts. Yeah, that's that's uh, yeah. I I got nothing. I <laughs> I got I got distracted with ghosts. No, I mean I like I don't, I don't even have like a funny ghost story. I think ghosts are dumb. I have a friend that's scared of ghosts. <laughs> I think ghosts are dumb. Okay. I do think ghosts are but dumb. If, hopefully, but, I, I don't get <laughs> okay. I would like. Hopefully, I don't get haunted for this, but. I mean, this is a weird. You don't believe in ghosts, dude. Like, what is that about? Of course, I don't Everyone believe in ghosts. Everyone else is hype on ghosts. <laughs> no, I think ghosts are dumb. You're crazy. You're gonna you get, get me off a of tangent. All I've been doing other than playing Dota <laughs> is watching the Vampire Diaries because that show is really good. All right, and okay. um, that's all I could do when I didn't have internet. Was right. I like because I on Netflix I could like queue it up right, and so like my internet sure. would die every five minutes. But there are ghosts in that show, and I could do a whole podcast on that show. It's so good. Um, no. Boy, I just lost so much street cred um, podcasting-wise by saying that I like that show. We're but everybody knows joking. it. Vengeful Spirit, I, I think her so her, her illusions carry the positive aura. Um, uh-huh. but, and then uh, the negative aura still stays. Yeah, so, the, so they, they still get the negative aura, and you still get the positive aura for the duration of that. So it's probably worth just killing, killing that ghost super quick to get that aura out of the way. Yeah, that's for sure. And also, like, I mean, it's weird because she's kind of like a lot of other supports where it's like she is very effective while very poor. So a lot of times you're not going to be able to get that, like, 4,200 gold. Plus, she kind of needs other items before eggs. Yeah. Um, where, you know, you want your force staff or your medallion. Oh, I love force on bench. But yeah, um, medallion is normally like the better play. But man, force staff, what night? Lens. Boy, Aether Lens Venge is so legit now. Yeah. Uh, I'm so I mean I guess to transition to my item build I am probably gonna be going treads Aether lens um, medallion force stuff like that. Um, You're a treads venge player. I think like I will probably go mana boots then build the Aether lens by with the with okay. the arcane. Yeah, that that makes sense. And then build treads just for the stats and you know she actually does some nice right click. It gives you farming potential. Um, and then yeah I mean it obviously depends on the game but I'll probably go. Force after Aether Lens, and then um, depending on like if we have a Roche lineup or not, I'll get a Medallion. Yeah. And then, uh, someday maybe I'll get an Agonims, but that's like the game will have to go like good 45, 50 minutes for me to get an Ags. Um, before uh, before they added Aether Lens, I normally, I mean, when I, when I ended up playing Venge, like most supports, it's normally when I'm like a hard five, because if not, <laughs> I'm going to fucking pick a core. Uh, yeah, I got plenty of options there. It's, but, uh, yeah, I, I normally went like mana boots just because if you're five slot, no one else is gonna have them, and Venge yeah. needs mana pretty bad. Turns out, um, but then like, and I always I would always go four step after that because I feel like you know I need to be on the map at all times, roaming and ganking, and like mana boots gives me the mana, and no one is gonna heal me because I'm the five, so I need some kind of HP regen, and uh, yeah. four step's pretty good for that. But I, I guess with with uh, with Aether Lens existing, you like that aspect of four staff doesn't really come into the equation that much. Like if you have a ring of health going on, you know, the two or three from four staff is not going to be relevant. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. She's definitely one of these poverty supports where it's like more often than not, yeah, it's like you know we're talking about all these items, but realistically in the game, it's going to be like, hey, buy all these wards, buy the courier, buy this, buy that, die a lot. It's like this. She has mediocre at best farming potential so it definitely um remains to be seen if um if we if i'm gonna get those items so what are you gonna do on morphling though morphling um, has a lot of different builds i'm gonna so, get um, silenced and then feed okay perfect that sounds That's like my morphling plan a is. oh god get out of here what the fuck i think my dude is crashing no percent everything's fine um yeah so there's there's morphling hasn't really changed at all uh, there's two Morphling builds, as always, but yeah. um, Lincoln well, Spear used to be an item that I hate to death, but now it's like, it's decent. I think Lincoln Spear is actually like a decent item now. They buff the damage you get on it, so it's not like, alright, my carry spent 20 minutes to get a defensive item, yeah. and then needs to spend another, like, t- that doesn't really help you farm that much, and then another, like, you know, 15 minutes to actually get his item, and then, you know, your carry is actually doing something at 35 minutes, but uh, yeah. it actually gives you decent damage now. 
Um, and it's such a comfort item on Morphling because like it gives him like the the perseverance part of it. Like Morph uses a shit ton of mana. He needs it for yep. fucking morphing. He, fucking waveform is 165 mana because you max that shit. Adaptive strike. Adaptive strike is pretty cheap, but uh, still, well, you know, you it's the third a spell you're gonna cast. Yeah, yeah, and it's in it's a uh, hundred mana at like it, it costs the most at the level one of it, and you don't you know wean yourself off of level one adaptive strike until you're like you know fucking uh, level eleven and shit. Mm -hmm. So, it adds that, up. yeah, yeah, that's that, that is correct. You get a point in ulti at six. Yeah, all right, we're all good. Um, yeah, so he he needs mana really bad. The perseverance is super nice. Um, every every build on Morphling is fucking shreds Aki into something else, um, mm -hmm. or I guess some, sometimes you go travels. If you're like really greedy, but with the uh, if you're gonna go Lincoln's, which I think is pretty good now, um, I feel like going Lincoln's travels is like kind of one of the dumber things you can do on this yeah. hero, you do or any hero. Lincoln. Yeah, like don't don't go Lincoln's fucking <laughs> travels on anything ever. Um, yeah, so like tre treads Aki Lincoln's, and then into like a Manta and Ethereal Blade and Butterfly seems like just kind of the way to go. Um, am, I, am I forgetting like a core Morphling item, Scotty? Yeah. Yeah, Scott. Scotty's pretty good. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so you go um, fucking. I, li I like Manta a lot. On some some people are super hype on um, on S and Y right now, and I think if you don't go, uh, if you don't go Lincoln's, it's pretty hard to support the Manta. So like, if you don't go Lincoln's and you do go like the uh, the E Blade build, maybe you just go. Uh, you can go S and Y off that. Um, smooth speed is like you know the best fucking stat in the game. So yeah. you can go that, but I think for the most part, like the main build, you go like. Lincoln's uh, Manta, and then you look from there and say, "Do I need a, like will an E Blade do a shit ton of work?" And if not, then you can go for Scotty from there or Butterfly if you like really want to right click like a motherfucker. And then somewhere in between all those items, and you know you can get a BKB if you want. But uh, yeah, oh yeah, Manta is also the best because you can fucking dispel silence and then you can morph stats again, which is yeah, you know that's the whole that's hero. always a big deal. Yeah, yeah I mean yeah, I, that's uh, very important. I am a shotgun morphling believer almost to a fault. Oh. Um, it's just such a fun build. I know I, I've definitely lost games just because I'm like, I want to go shotgun. And then I killed a dumb support that doesn't matter at 50 minutes, but I'm like, that was so satisfying. And then I, and then I like go out and then my team all dies. Then we lose the game. But right. still, it's such a fun build um, that I granted, like I also value E blade a lot higher than a lot of players just because like, I don't know. I feel like that item it gets underrated a lot on like the not traditional heroes. Like the other day, yeah. oh my god, I'm trying to think of it. I I built it on something. It's like I built I've like three E Blade Oracle games in like the last week because it's just like I have I have uh, a Ghost Scepter. I may as well build an E Blade and like be super damaging. Um, so I, I love E Blade. Plus forty agility is a really big deal. Um, but yeah, so I, I think like, yeah, I mean, we'll see in the game, right? But sometimes that E-Blade build is pretty bad. And then other times it's like the best, most game winning thing ever. You know, if your enemy is not like a BKB core or if it's like just a squishy core that you can just pick off. Yeah, um, like if they have a CM and a, a Lion as their supports, like just go the E-Blade build, you're going to fucking get a lot of gold out of them. You don't need to farm creeps, you just farm them. That's true too. It, it, yeah, I mean, boy, just thinking about it, like I now I want to play the Morphling because, <laughs> okay. like I, again, like one of the most like fun things is just like you send an illusion out to scout and then you like flip to the illusion and then you just kill a support and run away and it's just like making these guys just miserable. Like yeah, stealing great. their jungle away from them, they have to be scared about every little illusion they see because they're like, oh, it could be the support, but it also could be the Morphling and he could just like shift in and kill us. So that that's fun. Um, do we have any other comments? Any thoughts before we uh, hop into the game? Um, Morphling has some cool ass cosmetics, and I may buy some before we play. Okay, I have a lot of them, so uh, yeah, I may have fucking, some different for you. I have the Blade of Tears, which is like of essential. Course. Even no, though I was gonna it, say you can't not have it. It looks pretty weird, honestly. Like I don't think it really fits with the hero that much, but it's also like arm blades, which is like I mean, it's like Dude, 90s it looks cool. So cool. I yeah, it looks cool in game. Like I'm, I'm looking at it now, and they're just like floating like a foot above his arms for some reason in the back. But they're of them like, is just like, but they're like tethered to his arms. I love that effect yeah. where it's like something is bringing them to him. I love cosmetics, though. I'm such a cosmetic fiend. Anybody that knows me knows how much I love my uh, my beautiful courier that I've spent 
But the a, fucking uh, shard of the lost where he gets like ice fucking spikes all over him. Like this that's is the one I use. Cool. Yeah, dude, it's so cool. I or the goat is, one. By you gotta tell me, does does that does that fit well with the with the blade of tears? Yeah, shard dude, of lost? it does. Right, um, it's either I use that one, and then there's the rolling surge, which is like the Protoss one. Um, that oh, sets right. really cool too. And then the new set, the Protean Emperor. That one's really cool. I don't have that one yet. Yeah, I've seen that one like mixed and matched with other sets, and it looks really weird. But uh, on its own, it's pretty cool. Yeah, Rome um, Surge. Yeah, that is straight up fucking some Protoss shit. Holy shit! If Jesus any, Christ. also, I think it glows on the back in game, or it's supposed to, and it doesn't. Knowing Valve, it's probably that way. Yeah, but, um, definitely. If if you're a cosmetics fiend like us, when you when you want to talk about like the heroes you can make the ugliest by mixing and matching sets, Morphling is like number one on that list. You can make this hero look so dumb it's actually hysterical because he has so many sets that are so radically different timber yeah. is another good one to make really ugly nicks Nyx also nicks also yeah basically any hero that has like sets that vary a lot in color scheme and or like how large the pieces are um that's always a good time but so yeah i mean look you guys should all watch the vod to see our cosmetics that's that's the message we are sending right Venge has okay cosmetics they all kind of look was- the same like probably the most boring segment we've ever had on this show dude people love cosmetics all right yeah. cosmetics well, are I mean, that is, that's pretty proven that's <laughs> yes i'm very proven that's half the reason i play dota dude is because i have cute couriers and cool items and i get to count things on runes and that's like the highlight of my life honestly yeah well, like, that's half the reason i play kunkka is like my kunkka sword is so cool and it has so many things that count God, you have that fucking that blue goddamn X that like you can't fucking see against anything. I hate Dude, it. Dota pay to win. Dude, I, it's it's so shit. Like um, the first time Skrunk encountered that, he was like in the in the river and he'd never seen it before, and he like got X and he was like, "What the fuck?" Like there was no <laughs> X, and I was like, "Oh, his X is blue," and he's like, "I'm in the river. How is that fair?" Like, yeah, that's uh, that's some bullshit. I hate that. I hate that. So, a lot. so last comment before we get off on some weird tangent and. We're gonna actually get off, get into the game before this. I will say I've been really frustrated by as amazing as the battle pass is. The battle pass blink is like actually like invisible if you're playing on the winter map. It's so hard to see. It's like it feels like you know everybody makes like the joke like oh Dota's becoming pay to win. It legitimately feels like an advantage to have that if you, if you are using the winter map. So that is a problem I currently have. <laughs> I don't have a fix to it, but I'm going to complain about it anyway. That's valid. Okay. All right. So let's hop into Wait, the game then. Skilling on Morphling. You max Q and you get you max E. You get a point in W at four. And then, you know, you fucking you max your. And that's it. Yeah. Venge, you do. Well, like... yeah. What, what do you do on Venge? Because there's like, I mean, there's Wave and then there's Q and then there's a decision on when you get your E. Um. So I will probably be going with a Q max. I think, like, so the deciding factor generally for me is if their cores are natively low armor, uh, then I will max max the uh, W, the Scream, Howl, whatever it's called, Wave of Terror. Yeah. Um, but if they have like high armor cores, or if they have cores that build armor, then I'll just max Magic Missile. And a lot of times I'll get one point in Vengeance Aura at like four, but that it really depends on like, are we five manning, are we not? Yeah. Stuff like that. Um of course, get swap at six. Swap is a good skill, um, but yeah, so that's that's the gist of it. Um, yeah, I, I was a I was a hardcore magic missile uh, fiend, but um, now I've kind of switched. Like maybe you can get three in wave of terror before maxing magic missile, but I feel like you got to at least get the two in uh, yeah. in magic missile. Definitely, I mean, hundred seventy five uh, is a lot more scary than a hundred. Yeah, it's uh, it's a really well scaling nuke. Um, yeah, and like. The stun duration is pretty good at all levels. Or, I mean, it's actually pretty mediocre at all levels. Um, but so, you know, you can get away with skipping it for wave, uh, or rather, like, only keeping a few points in it with wave. So that's that's fun. But again, like, we'll see that in the game. And uh, the game, of course, the VOD will be up on .ptv1. One of us will post it. Uh, I think me. You've done the last few. So um, you can watch yeah, my perspective. Fine. Learn Otherwise, some you'd just spots. be watching me last hit for 18 minutes trying to get a fast Lincolns. Yeah. Well, it's weird because, like, it'd be nice if we could do it both ways. Like, you could watch me in the early game and you in the late game, but we're too lazy to edit that stuff. So, yeah, that's uh, fucking that sounds... advanced tactics. 
yeah, we don't we don't have the technology for that. Could have um, both honestly, but that's uh, it's a discussion for another time. Yeah, that's like some full Dota Cinema effort, and boy, yeah, we don't two get videos. Jesus Christ! All right, burn out. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So yeah, and then we'd make no content. Just kidding. I love you, Suns fan. All right. So let's hop into the game. The game will be visible on Dot PTV One, the YouTube channel, and uh, yeah. All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to. Hey. Yep. Hello. Hi. <laughs> well, this is the show. We're back on. That's it. And, um, we're one. very happy. We're great to announce that what I believe is the winning streak continues. Right? Have we been winning sure. recently? Sure. Sure. Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, I'm happy regardless of winning streak or just a singular win. Game went pretty well. I mean, we had definitely had some like uh, rough spots. Both of us were a little rusty on our respective heroes, but I was shit. It worked out in the long run. But it was okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I I had fun, even though I was like the most poverty support of all the poverty supports. With a quote-unquote support pudge. Excuse me, I'm dying because of this game. Quote-unquote support pudge. And uh, he bought literally nothing this entire game. I think he bought dust once, maybe twice. Maybe, yeah. Um, and I'm so do it a buff plus of it right now, which is the best thing ever, by the way. I didn't get paid to say that. I, yeah, I mean, I would happily be paid to say it, but I will. I would agree. If there's like one thing in my life that motivates me to play well and play Dota, it's to raise my rankings. It's like the most satisfying thing, actually. Yeah. After you support Pudge, purchased zero awards, placed zero awards, destroyed zero awards, but he did buy two dust. So to his credit, he Perfect. did buy that fucking 360 gold worth of support items. Yep. And uh, how many did I buy? That's that's the real. Um, 16 obs purchased, 16 centuries. All right. Pretty so, substantial. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, but I mean, that, you know, it's a pub game and we didn't know the guy. So, of course, he's just going to be an idiot and not, not buy, yeah. you know, who likes his support anyway, right? Yeah, uh, this is the punch pick. It's like you, you have to have your picks that are like, all right, well, I can't play core this game and I have to play support. So, I'm just going to play a thing that I don't have to play support as. You get exactly. your silencers, your pudges, your tusks, your bounty hunters, but like yeah. the core player who has to play support and is really upset about it. Yeah. Um yeah, it's uh you know, typical pudge picker. Typical Anyway, that guy had a pretty miserable time uh, also because we kept oh like, my God, yeah. all his hooks. Oh also, yeah. I mean like he's also just bad, but like we like between you and I, me swapping people and you making replicates and uh yeah or just waveforming it like he hooked my waveform i don't i don't actually know if that's possible maybe he just hooked me like maybe it ended earlier than i thought it would but i was waveforming to kill someone and then i was next to pudge and i was like the fuck it must have caught you on the end because i don't believe you can interrupt waveform like in the middle because i think it's one of those things where like you're not on the map like yeah that's 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 what i thought but i feel like that's one of those like weird um, things yeah but i'm not i'm not super sure anyway yeah this doesn't really not too consequential either way um but yeah that was uh it was was good yeah i mean that that was interesting all right like i feel like neither team really had like excellent synergy by any means it was just like both teams just kind of picked a bunch of heroes right so our team was Pudge support, Enchantress offlane, which we'll get to because boy, is that a dumb thing. OD mid, Vengeful Spirit, Morphling in the safe lane. And then the enemy team had a safe lane firing PA, a support kind of roaming witch doctor, a mid lone druid, and an offlane tide hunter, and then a roaming bounty hunter. And I guess, like, unless something else is jumping out to you, I want to talk about offlane Enchantress or just Enchantress in general first. Um... The tide fucked us up really hard. He I did. Think that's even though we killed him like three times, he was still just this fucking stupid piece of shit. And if Pudge ever left, he would just bully the fuck out of us. And like, I missed so many last hits. Like the last hits I got that game, it was like fucking two minutes. I would get like fucking like twenty last hits, and the next two minutes I would get like three because that's when Pudge is bullying and it's like super fucking difficult. Yeah, and then like Bounty Hunter kept rotating our lane. Really, everybody rotated to our lane. Actually, no, it was I a hot place. It it was some and like. It wasn't even like they people would just rotate our lane and just hang out and like be annoying. But like it wasn't even like they were rotating to push. Like they took our tower, but it took it they took them like longer than it should have. And yeah. it was just one of these weird situations where they were just throwing bodies at us. And not in like a good way. Um, but more in like a it's really yeah. annoying, please stop throwing bodies at me way. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. And it's- 
yeah, I mean, we talked about our annoyances with Tide offlane. Personally, I love Tide. I know a lot of people think that hero is like really boring and they hate him. Um, but I, I think he's really good and fun, and I like him. And that guy built Ags. Tide Ags is legit. It yeah, sounds fun. it sounds mediocre, like when you read the flavor or when you read the text, but it's actually like quite good. Um, but we had an offlane Enchantress, and boy, if you thought Tide Hunter was cancerous in, leaning against him, Enchantress is like ten times worse. Even though yeah, they had a, hero. they had like a really good duo against Enchantress, or not really I good. I don't know about that. They had a, they had a decent duo because PA would just spam daggers at her, um, and that but that like, doesn't do anything until PA is like level seven. Yeah, but like the PA, like the Enchantress couldn't harass PA like she can harass other things because PA had Blur. Um, yeah, like from the little I was watching of it, it did not seem like the typical Enchantress domination, but still, like it's eventually got to a point where Enchantress was just. Doing crazy amounts of work. Um, also, Witch Doctor Ward was very effective against Enchantress. Yeah, that, that, that's like, definitely true. In that like early mid game stage, I guess um, uh, attack speed from Phantom Strike probably offsets Untouchable a pretty good amount. So yeah, maybe maybe they're decent. But the, the magic damage from Witch Doctor is like so minimal unless he gets like a Maledict into stun into a fucking dagger into like PA all attacking on her. But uh, yeah, he was slowing Maledict early. Um, yeah, that's yeah, he might. Have, I don't even think he had a point in Voodoo. Um, and I, I think I saw it at some point. I'm sure he I, did. Yeah, it's, it's so atypical to not at least go one point. I don't think anyone would do that. Yeah, I I used to because boy, do I hate voodoo restoration. That ability is so boring. Um, it's good though. I mean, like I get it, obviously. Um, yeah. But it's so boring. All right. Um. Yeah, Enchantress, good hero. So the enemy team had a lone druid, and we were talking about this, of course, because how could we not talk about lone druid? Yeah. Um. That. Like Lone Druid Bear was like the most short lived bear I've ever seen in that like mid to late game. Because like Enchantress was just pounding on it with impetus. Uh O D was just pounding on it with, you know, O D orbs, whatever they're called. You were pounding on it. I was giving it minus armor and Pudge was there, I guess. Yeah. That was a very sad L D and he had a really late uh, AC as well. Yeah. Yeah, he had like what? It, it was like an eighteen minute ish radiance, but no, it was twenty one, twenty one minute radiance. He got relic at like eighteen, which is oh, okay. still kind of late. Yeah, well, especially for Coil and Druid, I think it's okay. Yeah, and all, but also like he didn't get a Midas or anything like that. So yeah, just, oh yeah, if like, he didn't go Midas. That, you know, that's that's actually really bad timing. If you don't go Midas, you just go flat, flat, flat radiance. That's, yeah, he went that's actually like, really bad. He went like brown boots on on Scylla, phase on bear, and then like. Stout Quell and Bear, and then just Radiance, and it, yeah, it was not great. Yeah, also, he did get killed like four times in lane by OD. Yeah, well, that's why his timing was bad. Yeah, um, but so I mean that that was a thing. Um, like, I mean, what what did you think about the game? What are your like overall thoughts? Um, I had a really boring tempo to that game. Um, yeah, I was I, kind of bored just looking at you. Honestly. Yeah, I was just I was just last hitting in my lane. And uh, then eventually someone would come up and I would uh, fucking waveform over to them. And then I would get hooked out of my waveform and uh, nothing would happen. I'd be like, OK, I guess we'll just guess we'll just keep farming. Um, not to say I didn't like enjoy the game, but like from a spectator's perspective, like if someone was if someone was casting this game, they would not keep their camera over me at all. Like they would have have, have like the last hits chart up and that would be all you need to know about how I'm doing. Uh, that would be all the information. Um, despite the, like, really bad start, um, I did end up with, like, pretty good CS, uh, at the end of the game. Um, having 200 by 30 minutes is, like, you know, you, normally you want, like, about 60 by 10 minutes, and then I, I like to have maybe, like, 125 to 150 by 20, but I, I think overall, like, if you're playing carry, you're not doing super bad if you have at least 200 by 30, and if you have, like, you know, 50 or 100 over that, then, like, you're doing good. Mm. Um, so, like, as long as I pass, uh... Because the the thing of saying like you know you get fifty or sixty last hits by ten minutes that's like it's not really an indicator of how like good you are it's just an inca- indicator of like how good your lane was and because I mean if you can't farm you can't farm mm-hmm. um, but like once you have you know thirty minutes to like catch up in the jungle and all that shit like you can get a better sense of how you're doing um, so I think overall like Morphling played out well I definitely like Lincoln's on him um, I I can't really imagine not going Lincoln's unless it's, it was just like a really good E Blade game. But, uh, yeah, like, the Perseverance, I could just, like, waveform everywhere. It was great. Uh, and Yasha is necessary on that hero. Yeah, for sure. I mean, sometimes, like, I'll do... Because uh, I, I play quite a bit of Morphling. And, again, I mean, we already talked about it. I'm biased towards the shotgun build. And what a lot of times what I'll do is I will just go, um, like, Aquila, Treads, Lincolns, 
Yasha, and then go E Blade, and then finish the Manta if they don't have silences. Yeah. And like the Yasha just elevates your farm speed so much, and it's it's nice. Like if you're going for that yeah. really like you're really trying to maximize your E Blade timing. Uh, I do that pretty often. Um, yeah, that's that. That makes sense. I just didn't feel like it was a good E Blade game. Like the no. only people I could snipe with it were like Witch Doctor, who was so far in the back that I could hardly adaptive strike. And he was glimmered. And, uh, yeah, and he would like glimmer and the bounty hunter who I can't keep track of and fucking like PAs in my face. Um, and shit also, PKP. Yeah, and since since the nerf to um to casual Yasha, I've just been kind of like against getting it in general. Yeah, I I've kind of fallen on that side. Casual Yasha was just such a fun build. Yeah. But now, like you said, I mean it got nerfed and like I don't know. I I probably wouldn't do that that item progression anymore. Yeah. But then again, I haven't played Morphling in a while, but I'm also like a huge Manta advocate now. Like I, I was yeah. so against that item for so long. Like it's really shit as a first item. Like it does not do anything. Like there's a juggernaut build where like people just like they don't go mask or or uh, or battle fury. They just go like like I guess I'll get Manta. Mask isn't good anymore, so we'll just skip it and get Manta. That's and then they right. go like Manta Scotty and you do like 150 damage with like 10k net worth. And you just like you don't do anything. Like Manta doesn't make your hero do anything. Um, but it makes, like, what you already do a little bit better. So, like, you know, Morphling has a shit ton of Agi, so his illusions are strong, and you can use it to farm, but that's kind of, like, more or less about it. Um, but, like, Morphling's already pretty strong, so, like, you get Manta, and it's just like, hey, Morphling, who's already gonna kill people, plus fucking extra farm. It's great. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm kind of with you that first item Manta's pretty not good, just, like, I mean, anyway that's played any illusion hero knows, like, your illusions are only as good as the other items you have, right? So, yeah. you know, unless you're a Naga, um, it's like, if you just have, like, Manta, like, they're just going to kill it in, like, three hits. Yeah. Um, so, and that's definitely a very valid point. I've kind of, it's kind of brought up a point where Saint Inyasha, of course, is, like, a really good item nowadays. Um, yeah. And in, like, the last few patches. But for some reason, it's just brought up the fact that uh, when I was a much worse Dota player, I used to think that Sage and Yasha was the worst item in the game, and I was like, I was like so far on the Sage and Yasha hater side. That was, was like that was the trend. Um, like, I that item was so garbage. Items. Yeah, well, it was like it was everyone just, hated on. It was like Vanguard, everyone hated on too, and fucking uh, well, Vlad's everyone hated bad. on. Yeah, well, yeah, it definitely was bad. But yeah, like these things, like people hated the shit out of Vanguard. They hated the shit out of SNY because they were like the you know new player. Like, oh, this item gives these like a multitude of stats. I love a multitude of stats. Therefore, I'll get all of them. Yeah, um, my my prerogative was always that Saint Genosha was bad because you're investing a lot of net worth into something that doesn't like excel in any one region. Yeah, and of course now like you know, like, you buy it because it has a great build-up and, like, it has a lot of utility and it does a lot of varied things. But, so, that it's, like, you know, just one of those beliefs you hold when you're a bad player and it's just, like, you know, like, I'm sure we all have weird biases against certain items. Um, yeah. Like you hate all the ones that supports buy. And, um, I hate... Oh, I love them. I don't know. I don't know what I hate. I hate... Adam. I don't hate any item. I'm an equal opportunity item buyer. I just like farm, honestly. No no bias against yeah, any item. I like the ability to buy items. Yeah, just as long as it's an item, I'm pretty happy. I'm against, uh, shit, what do I hate? Um, casual Wraith bands. No, that's fine, too, in some cases. Yeah. I, don't, yeah, I, don't, I don't just like anything, honestly. I love casual Wraith bands. I love casual, like, bracers, Wraith bands, nulls. If you no, like... casual bracer, I'm actually fairly against. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I mean, fuck casual. Dude, buy an urn instead. Like, what are you doing? Urn is more money. Yeah, but it's also way better. Uh, and, like, most of the people that get casual bracers are in heroes who can get so much out of the Sage's Mask. That's fair. Um, Which is, like, and, and if you're a support, you have a bunch of slots open, so just, like, buy the two gauntlets of strength. If you're, like, super afraid of what money is, I think it's fine. I like it. I, anyway, would I mean, obviously, you have a lot of slots open. Like you got well, yeah. boards and a TP and potentially dust and potentially smoke and yeah, if it's a, if it's a dust game, sure. But uh, you know they they consolidated some of that shit for you. But anyway, yeah, I mean there are situations for casual bracer. But if I had to choose an item I hate, that's it. Oh, uh, that's fair. Um, I don't know what item I would choose to hate. Like it used to be Dragonlance. Fuck it. Uh, yeah, I'm not a big Dragonlance fan. I mean, I hate Aether Lens because it's way too good on certain heroes. But after yeah. the after the nerf, I'm kind of fine with it. Honestly, I have not been building it nearly as much. Um, I also don't like Glimmer Cape. I think that item is dumb. Yeah, it's really good, but I just yeah, when I, kind of hate it fundamentally. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's, okay. that, that makes sense. That's a fun conversation. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, listen, say. good hero. Uh, it's good to hit D immediately after you start getting hit in morph strength. That's something I learned very quickly. My reactions were not uh, well, quite up to par. Very quickly, but you but you didn't do it until like 40 minutes. Um, yeah. Well, I also didn't really die that much. Well, yeah. I, so I, I, got, I got burst out of nowhere, which is very sad, but yeah. Pudge and I were doing all the dying. Pudge had 15 deaths right. and I had 11. And uh, I mean, I was adventurous. So that's it's my experience. Flashy. Yeah, it was, um, I don't know. Like, I'm kind of fine with dying on Venge, even though, like, it is one of these weird things where, like, I could kind of die and just be like, ah, it's fine, I'm just Venge. Like, I'm giving him negative damage. Yeah. When in actuality, like, it was just me getting caught out like an idiot. Um, <laughs> but then it's like, oh, it's tactical, don't worry about it. Um, yeah, they fucking farm slower now, and I wasn't doing anything anyway. Yeah. But, uh, so, I mean, that's that's, worth. that's really most of the game. I wasn't, yeah. like, like... I'm trying to think of how to explain the game, but it wasn't like a well concerted effort on either side. It was just it was, kind of like we just ran bodies into each other and then like Yeah, like the 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 net worth is just like straight up and down. Like no one even goes above five K until like twenty no, not even. They don't go above five K until like forty two minutes. Forty three minutes is when we hit above five K. Like that's what we got net worth differential. Yeah. And that was yeah, the the only thing that actually like made the at least net worth different between us is that we took Raxes. But, like, the game, always, it, it felt like we were in control the whole time. It just, like, sometimes we would die and we're like, oh, that was dumb. Yeah. Like, we fucking tried to force a Rax for no reason and then just, like, died for no reason. Yeah, it's like, okay, well, that happens if you try to force a Rax without fucking regard for anything. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's, that's about it. So I think we're going to agree that this was a, uh, this was a, I mean, a pretty good combo. It, it, it worked out. I would run it again. That's yeah, my I like professional opinion. Well. All right, well then that's uh, that's about that. I will, as always, do the plugs, and I have them written down, so I won't forget any. Probably. Yeah. Maybe. Make sure you mention twitch dot twitch dot com. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. one's an, that's an important one. You can't forget twitch dot com. Yes, twitch dot com, um, twitch dot xxx in uh, the new the new world. That's a different website. Yeah, that's uh, you can find Grouty twitch dot xxx slash Grouty. <laughs> yeah, that's um, right here. All right. YouTube, of course, where you if you want to watch our game and enjoy the glory, you can live vicariously through us and watch win. Last hit. A, well, you, can, you can watch him last hit sometimes, but also mostly watch me do things. Right. Uh, that's .ptv1. Don't forget about the one. It's a numerical one. Our website, where you can find everything, uh, including the leaderboards that are going to be updated because of our in-houses, uh, which I'm sure you've all heard about. That's defenseofthebations.com. And uh, we have an Amazon banner on defensivepatients.com. You should click that. It is nice. It costs you no money, but it gives us some. We steal from Amazon, although they kind of know about it, so it's cool. Um, it's like on the down low. They're giving it us under the table. Secret steals. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Bezos, he was like, hey, I'm very wealthy. You guys can take like a few pennies here and there and uh, maybe make enough money to, like, I don't know invest in stocks okay right, All right. yeah that's yep a, that's a thing yep they pass an amazon stock that's a weird tangent I, i'm not even gonna this continue is, that this is a great plug man it's yep. really working out for you i'm i'm so happy about it this is why they pay me um twitter you can find us there i'm at ursinity proud is at proud dota uh they're easy we repeat them constantly you should know you should follow hang out i could talk about k-pop and yeah, sometimes uh, i say things it's like really entertaining yeah prouds is pretty like dota centric mine is kind of like a mess of like a lot of different things we have a private chat channel you can join we also have a discord so that's a really cool system that y'all should join it's fun we're switching over from mumble and uh you know it's uh it's nice we like discord we it's fun uh, we have a subreddit as well, r slash defense of the patients. You can follow all of the news, et cetera, about dot p. And uh, you want to talk to us? That's that's a way to do it. A good place to chat. Um, email us defense of the patients at gmail dot com. It is uh, another again like one of the many many venues for which uh, you can communicate with us. And uh, yeah, I mean, come to the in houses. That's that's what I would say. In houses Thursday nights and Saturday nights nine EST. And uh, we usually run like three lobbies over the night. 
um, or not not three lobbies consecutively, but like three games. And with the new system that I'm sure you guys have heard about already, uh, we're gonna have like a basically like leaderboards where you go up like dot points, um, which is a name that I did not coin. I swear. Um, every time you win or lose, and then we're doing giveaways. I think it's like 150 dollars of gives giveaways for Steam Cash over the course of the season. And it's just a fun Free way. games get money. And also it'll help us with balancing in-houses because balance shuffle is not very good and you can't trust people to balance themselves. So I, I shouldn't say that. Like, but All right. That's, kinda, that's yeah. the thing. We got it. Yep, that's it. Um, before I ramble on anymore, thanks for listening. Thanks for hanging out. And uh, yeah, remember, it's our theory, but it's probably your fault.